Hello, I'm Charlie Mops. Lance says Yamakaze, and I said Yamazuki. It's actually called Yamazaki, and it's the most trendy whiskey in the world right now. We want to find out what all the fuss is about, so with me as always is Craig. Konnichiwa. <laughs> And start. as always with us is Lance. And Lance, you've brought a friend along this time. I have, Kanichiwa, and uh, this is my brother Tim. Hello. <laughs> He's actually got a little bit more Japanese experience than us. He has actually been there. Um, we just drink from there. Welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. I, um, I've only just recently come back from Japan, so uh, I brought back something for you to sample that um, I hope you guys like. Well, we'll give it our well, best shot. Alrighty, gentlemen, so first we're going to try the Yamazaki single malt whiskey. Do you want Kawasaki? I prefer the Yamakawasaki Yuki. Oh, that, that, hey, that's got a ring to it. It does. Mm. The Yamazaki. Mm. Now, there's more than one type of Yamazaki. We've just got the basic one today. It's just the single malt whiskey. Yamazaki is the oldest distillery in Japan. So they know what they're doing. The 12 year, which is the world's most popular whiskey at the moment. It's trending well, and we only hear good things about it. That's correct. So let's get stuck mm. in. And this is a 10 year as well, isn't it? No, there's no year on this bottle. It doesn't say if it's a blend. It just says single malt whiskey okay. with no year. So it's probably a baby. It's probably a, a light and youthful whiskey. Okay. Well, let's find out. Yeah. That's good to me. youth. Oh, the cork. Suspense. Yeah. It's a screw top. <laughs> <laughs> it's a screw top oh, <laughs> <laughs> well Lance what happens with screw tops normally they go in the bin <laughs> and then you put a cork in it if it's good Lance Margo trying to pull a screw top pretending it's a cork mm. doesn't really work it turns out <laughs> there's a fair bit of resistance there with that cork Margo mm. so we're going to uh... what will come out eventually Lance, what flavours can you smell? It's very fruity. I smell Japanese metho. Oh, first. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I, I do smell a, a fruity flavour mm. now. Um, now you mention it, it's so sweet. I'm getting smell. Maybe a little bit of pineapple. Oh. Yeah, it's it's tangy fruits, very tangy fruits. Some apricot. Okay. Yeah. We established that it, there's no year on the bottle, but it is a single malt, so I'm not expecting it to be very smooth. No, I think it will have a bit of a punch about it. Mm. Probably a high alcoholic. There's no smoke or anything like that, you know, it's, 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 it's Japanese, all, it's, yeah, it's all fruit. So there's no, there's no element of peat coming through from the smell. Yeah. But there's no sort of alcohol punch that you sometimes get from a lower grade whiskey. I think referencing it, comparing it to a different whiskey, I'm comparing it to the Glenlivet in my head. Because it, it's just, whoops. It's, just, it's also it's fruity. Good. Yeah, it's yeah. very fruity. Yeah. I think I got I mean, apricot and pineapple out of there. And compared to like a Glenlivet, it's, it's you know, they're two very fruity. Mm, it smells whiskey. a bit, uh, it smells a bit buttery as well. And here, hmm. shall we have a taste? We shall. Oh, you yeah. got him again, Marto. <sighs> Trying to resist that one. Oh. You're wow. right, Craig. All good. How are you Still feeling? Right. Any flavours coming through, Craig? Not that I can distinguish so far, but it will, it will come. Okay. I don't know if it's something I'd uh, normally try to drink neat. I can feel it burning as it's going down now. Yeah, mm, yeah I felt the burn. It's a bit more of a burn than um, some other whiskies I have had. I'm not a big whiskey drinker, so... But, yeah. Would you like to try a bit of water with it? No, I'm alright. It's... um. It's leaving a bit of an aftertaste. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. I think that's lovely. Comparing it to what we've tried on the other shows, we talked about Jamison and the Glen Moray. We, I gave those both a seven. I reckon we're in that sort of yeah in that sort of territory because there is a lot of burn at the end of it. Yeah, it is. It is warm, but there's plenty of flavour. Yeah, there is heaps of flavour, and it's not uh, mm. very dry either. I, th I was worried it would be very dry, but it's quite smooth. I'm feeling up the back of my throat a bit of dryness after having it. I don't know if that's just me being a um, a rookie whiskey drinker. So all the heat, it, there's not a great deal of it, but it's it's stayed in my mouth. It hasn't gone any further. Mm -hmm. Craig, any flavours? Not that I can distinguish. Okay. Right. Um, was a bit of a burn, sweetie type flavour. Sweet as in fruit, or probably. 
No sweet as in sort of sugar, like a vanilla or a caramel, anything like that. Feels like a little pick. I'm getting slightly sugary fruits, tangy fruits though, like like you said, pineapple, maybe mandarins. I must uh, say for the record, it is my fault Craig does not have any red lemonade today. It was my job to bring it, and I forgot. Oh no. This is the first episode that I have not had raspberry lemonade, and I'm most disappointed. That's okay. He will burn later. I'm sorry. <laughs> No complaints for me in the sense that there's nothing bringing it down. I think it is on par with things we've had in the past, like the Glenmore. Eh? But uh, if we want to talk price, which I know Lance likes to talk price, for the Don't price we that we paid for this Yamazaki, we could have got two bottles of the Glenmore. That's right. Or two bottles of the Jamison. Mm. I'm not sure if it's something to do with shipping or... It's imported, that's what you pay yeah, extra for. Yeah. It seems everything in Japan is cheap, but to actually get... The brand Yamazaki... Being very popular at the moment, that's what you're paying for. You're yeah. paying for that popular brand. And yeah. Sundori, which are uh, really taking over the world of whiskey at the moment. Sundori. Yeah, they're really all over the place, yeah. Sundori. Yeah. The green ore that we had in the Irish episode, which we fell in love with. Oh, yes. That's um, fallen under the umbrella of the Sundori. So, scoring. Craig, would you or would you not have the Yamazaki again? I'd probably consider it. Are you getting any burn? Any pain? I did get a burn initially, it's just war, which is a little bit unpleasant. Any flavour? Oh, there's flavour there, I just can't really distinguish the difference between them. Okay. It, is there any grubbiness coming through? Anything that's making you regret having tasted it? Not really. So it's on the... It's on the up upper end of the possibly. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, that's, that's a good area. Tim, what are you thinking? I actually enjoy it, quite enjoy it. Like, there's a bit of a burn there, but it's like I don't drink straight spirits very often, and it's definitely compared to the cheaper stuff that I would normally drink, say, just a shot of Johnny Walker or something, which is obviously a Scotch whiskey. But um, I couldn't ever imagine drinking that neat, whereas something like this I'd actually consider. It's got a bit of burn, but it goes down pretty well. We're converting him slowly. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> Mm. Mind you, I um I wouldn't know how to score out of a hundred because I've got really not much experience to compare it from. But yeah. um, would you like to score out of ten? Out of ten, I'd probably I'd probably give it a six and a half, seven out of ten. It, it's definitely something I could do again. Break it. <laughs> <laughs> we go seven. Maybe it runs with the family. Must be in the family. Yeah. yeah. I give it a seven out of ten. Noted. Nice. Mm. Lance, what are you thinking? I'm enjoying. It. Um, well, I've man, I and I have actually. Tried a, a similar bottle of Yamazaki um, a fair while ago. Um, the 12 year we tried, I believe. Yeah, we did. It's definitely on par with the fruity flavour that I can remember. Uh, I think this bottle is probably a little bit smoother than the last one. I remember the last one having a bit of a high, higher alcoholic punch to it. Out of 100 points, I'd have to give this, my opinion, around the 78, 79 mark, uh, 80 mark. I'm very happy with it. So it's so, a 78 or a 79 or, or an maybe an 80. Okay, let's just say 80. Good. Maybe with 80. Okay. Yeah, um, that, it's very, very nice. Well, comparing it to the other Yamazaki we had, that had a nice coconut edge to it, which I really mm -hmm. enjoyed. This one doesn't have that. Okay. But no real complaints either. And I can't mark it really any different than I did with the Glenmore. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, I'm going to have to give it a 70 out of 100. Okay. 70. Seven zero. Seven zero. Whole numbers. <laughs> Can I just say as well, I've just had another sip of mine and had a bit of a bigger mouthful this time and there's a lot more kick and burn to it when I have a bigger mouthful. Okay. So um, I think if, if, I, if I take small sips, I definitely think that um, it's more enjoyable, but if I try to have a bit more in my mouth... Is, this, uh, is, this is something I want to introduce you to. It's called water. <laughs> yeah, well, Martin will frown upon me, but this this, know, this yeah. helps. So now that um the water's in here, I'll give it another try and see how. Yeah, I yeah, no, that's I can definitely I can taste it. There's no burn anymore. It's definitely taken the burn out, but that's that's a lot more enjoyable. I could definitely sit and drink this throughout the evening. But are you getting the same amount of flavour from the whiskey? Not quite as much flavour, but the flavour is still there. Yeah. I can still still taste it. I'm I'm not sure what the the flavour is. I couldn't depict an exact flavour, but I can definitely still taste it. It's not as strong, but there is no burn now at all. So. Yeah, there might have been just a little bit too much water, but... So it was a probably maybe from Craig. 
It was a 7 out of 10 from Tim. Mm-hmm. It was an 80 out of 100 from Lance. Yep. 70 out of 100 from me. Let's move on. I enjoyed that. Me too. So, Tim, you've just come back from Japan, is that right? Yes, that's correct. I um, went over there for a friend's wedding and um, spent three weeks over there. So, um, got to see the different kinds of culture and um, whatnot over there. It was definitely different, just seeing alcohol sold in the local supermarkets. I think you can't walk more than 50 metres without running into a uh, family mart or a 7-Eleven over there. They're over <laughs> 50 metres on the blocks. Are they owned by Japanese or... Um, or, in, or yeah, all Japanese. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Just oh. walk in and you've got alcohol all over the shelves there to buy. Um, yeah. 12-year bottles, 12-year aged bottles. You can get anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 yen, which you're looking at about 18 to $25 for wow. a bottle of uh, 12-year whiskey. So it was amazing. Um mm. Yeah, as I said earlier, I um, grabbed a bottle of um, Nikka that I've actually brought home for you guys to sample, so I uh, picked that one up. That one was a bit more expensive, still a lot cheaper than you get here in the country, though. He's good to us, isn't he? Oh, he's, he looks after us. So, um, yeah, um, that one was 6,300 yen over there, which is probably about $80, but um, that's pretty good compared to the normal bottle of Jim Beam, which you can buy for 1,100 yen, $14 for a 700 ml bottle over there. Is that the white label Jim Beam? Yeah, so just white label Jim Beam, you're normally looking at about $14 a bottle. The the other amazing thing, like I couldn't bring one back because the um, restrictions on bringing two litres of alcohol back, so you could spend 2,500 yen, $30, yeah. and buy a four litre plastic bottle of uh, <laughs> Japanese whiskey over there. It was just on the bottom shelf. In the uh, local Seven Eleven, grab a four litre bottle and it'll do you for a couple of weeks. Oh, you've got to love our government, hey? And tax and everything. <laughs> so mm. it's was, it was definitely interesting um, yeah. going out and having dinners and that. They do Nomi Hodai, which is actually um, all you can drink. So <laughs> you go into a restaurant and they do Tabe Hodai, all you can eat, and Nomi Hodai. You normally pay equivalent of 30 Australian dollars to have all you can eat and all you can drink for 90 minutes. And um, they just, that, that normally encases beers, so you've got your Asahi, your Kirin beer coming out to you whenever you want, put your hand up, and um, Umeshu, plum wine, that was actually probably one of the delights over there in Japan, you, if you can get a decent tasting Umeshu, it's actually very sweet and really nice, you, you can't find it anywhere here in Australia, like, okay. since coming back we've looked all over trying to find this Umeshu that we could get from restaurants over there. Yeah. And they just don't have the quality of it here. It's just really cheap, really bad tasting plum wine here in Australia. <laughs> mm. And um, the other thing you could get was just your sake, warm or cold sake there. And the quality of Japanese sake in Japan is just two, second to none. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Mm. How do you but, like your sake? Um, I'm not a big drinker of it. I, I don't enjoy it that much, but I don't know if that's just because it's been sake that I've not had in Japan. When I was in Japan, I enjoyed it. So, but did you have it cold, hot, warm? just just warm? How do you like it, Lance? Oh, I actually never had the experience of. Um... You've not had a sake. No, no, never had it. I've witnessed Marty having a sake. Uh, having a sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've heard all sorts of stories, oh. but I've never tried it. I like it hot. I don't mm. like it boiling hot, oh. but but really? reasonably hot. It's funny you say a lot of the stuff that you've been trying, like the, the plum wine you've been trying to find over here, and you haven't been able to find it. Same with this this whiskey I've been trying to to find in Australia it is not available. Coming back to the all you eat, all you can drink. I'm just thinking Aussies going over there to this all you can drink thing that could get messy. Yeah, yeah so it's it's really interesting. Like they just really, I think they recognise that we weren't traditionally, obviously physically we don't look the same as Japanese. We've got a lot of different appearance appearance looks and whatnot and I think they just recognised we weren't from that culture <laughs> mm-hmm. so they saw us pretty wasted stumbling around and uh, I think we we did all you could eat and all you could drink for 90 minutes at one place went on next door did all you can drink for another 90 minutes <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, was, was, was this the box or the wedding <laughs> no this was this was the this I think was two nights before the wedding and it was just the bride because my, my mate's Australian, and he was 
his bride to be was Japanese, so his now wife is Japanese, and her family wanted to thank us all for coming to Japan and celebrating the wedding. So oh, they you, took right. fourteen of us out and paid for all we could eat and all we could drink for the ninety minutes. And then we wanted to follow on, so we did follow ons next door. And then following that, we decided that we wanted to experience Japanese karaoke. So we uh, went to a karaoke bar, and the karaoke bar also offered all you could drink. What song did you sing, Tim? <laughs> oh, I've got um, a very interesting video of me singing <laughs> Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe, and the microphones that are there are actually on the microphone stands, and it's got me dancing with a swivel microphone, so it was very interesting. Uh, if you're going to do it right, do it right the first time. Because <laughs> no, nothing's well done. Oh, it's out of red! You've done it. He's gone. <laughs> you just broke him, Tim. Oh, this early in too. <laughs> you just broke him. <laughs> For the rest of the show, he's going to be like this. <laughs> you just broke him. Because oh, nothing says Japanese culture like an Australian going out to all you can drink and then finishing off with Japanese karaoke. Uh, sounds like a good time. Oh, yes. Oh, no. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'm just picturing Tim in that video clip of Carly Rae Jepsen. Because I wasn't there that night, so all I've got for reference is that video clip of Carly Rae Jepsen. But instead of her, <laughs> in a little outfit, I'm imagining Tim, with his lovely Australian accent singing voice, yeah, yeah. performing such a song. Yeah, we it's a delicate good song. <laughs> Hence my... Uh, uh, my, break, uh, um, my, yeah. my break. You're broken. <laughs> my brokenness. Uh. So which brings us to a brand new segment of Grog Snobs. Tim Sins karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that night end up? Pretty well? Yeah, it was a good night. Look, <laughs> we, well um, we were in Sapporo City and um, we ended up coming out of there with a couple of us not able to walk properly. Um, we went and did the Ferris wheel that was on top of one of the buildings that went above all the city so you could see all the city. It was really nice, but... Um, Boy, did we drink a lot. <laughs> a lot a lot of beer, a lot of sake, a lot of plum wine. It was yeah. it was a really good night. And, and were you sober for the wedding? <laughs> yeah, well, we, we had a whole day in between to recover, so... Excellent. So I don't think that would have been enough. <laughs> so, so, were you sober for the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> so, you were legless, got on a Ferris wheel that is apparently on top of a building, oh. which is in an earthquake-prone city... <laughs> Uh, he's, here to tell, he's here to tell the tale. <laughs> hey, well, I'm a lucky bastard. <laughs> well, it's lucky he was on the Ferris wheel because if, um, say, if an earthquake hit or the building collapsed, the Ferris wheel will keep going. Yes, yeah, yeah. Ferris wheel will keep going. Depends which way it's going, though. What if it's going the other way? You're going to get a bunch of top spin and just. Doesn't matter what way it goes, as long as it goes that way to the bar. I suppose. <laughs> Go to the next 90 minute session. Yeah. No, just drop us off here, mm. will you? Cheers. Mm. Have you got a microphone? Roll, roll past the bar. Because I want that Japanese girl to call me, maybe. <laughs> By the way, do you have a wrecking ball? <laughs> I want to swing on it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I just want to make sure I don't want... Uh, I gave me yeah. like a wrecking ball. Oh, that could be uh, as you're going past on the Ferris wheel down the earthquake-ridden street of Japan. We gave me like a wrecking ball. <laughs> Actually, I, I heard a story once. This is completely unrelated. Oh, that's all right. Um, Half the stuff uh, we talk about is completely unrelated. <laughs> yeah, mm. we haven't talked much, much about whiskey yet. I had a mate of a mate who was on a train in Adelaide, and some guy was on his laptop on this train and was playing Barbie Girl by Aqua. Mm. And he didn't have speakers or anything. It was just the laptop speakers, and he had it cranked. So it was rubbish to listen to oh my barbie girl <laughs> and it was just out of this piece of poo speakers on his laptop okay yeah. and he had it cranked and he was told by a few different passengers can you please turn that down that's very annoying when they came to the next stop and the doors opened please stand back mind the gap <laughs> we're not in london but um this big maori samoan fella you know six foot eight big dude just Walked up near this guy, picked up his laptop, and threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was just thinking, imagine being on the 
train platform and you're about to step onto this train with the doors <laughs> open and all of a sudden this laptop flies over your head. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway. I thought you were going to say this big Marigo was going to start dancing to it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he might have been singing um, karaoke to the... Yeah, he might have been on the train with the microphone. I'm a baby girl. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I'm a baby girl. Hunja! <laughs> 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 Alrighty, gents, it's whiskey club time. Now we have the Mia Gikyo, which is a 12 year single malt. I'm glad you said that because I was reading a letter and it, I had no idea how you would spell that. Mia Gikyo. Mia Gikyo. Let's hand it to him. Does that sound right? Mia Gikyo. Here, Tim. You read it. How does Tim pronounce that? Uh, it's Mia Gikyo. That was close. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Mia Gikyo. Excellent. Mm. Okay. I have a way with words. And again, it's a screw top. At least you've worked out it was a screw top before you tried pulling it like a cork. Yeah. That smells so good. Oh, really? Oh, it's it's smoky. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's making me nervous. It doesn't smell like ethanol as much as the last one. That's for sure. It smells a lot nicer. Oh, I cannot wait for this. It has so that this... lovely smoky smell that yeah. I was not expecting from any of these Japanese whiskies. No, I was expecting very fruity. It is a little bit fruity, but it has a, a very strong smoky smell. Smokiness makes me nervous. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Can just... I score it just based on its smell? Yeah. And can, not taste it? Can, can we just pour the whole bottle into like a big decanter and just let it like fumigate the room? <laughs> Testing nuts for your reference. Wax all, wax off. <laughs> Color. Intense amber with glimmering gourd. Nose. Burnt toffee. Young hay. Oh, what is that? Did you, sorry, sorry, did you say bird toffee or burnt toffee? Bur burnt. Cool. Burnt. Can I understand what you said? Bird toffee. Bird toffee. We've got a bird next door. Bird toffee. Mm. <laughs> He's going to be toffee, but shut up. <laughs> with candied winter spice. Palette. Initial crunch of apples and pear accompanied with vanilla and cinnamon. It works, well, where cinnamon works is you break it up. Cinnamon. Well balanced heat <coughs> and dryness <laughs> spreading throughout the mouth with relative light weight on the palate. Finish. <laughs> finish. <laughs> finish him. I'm, finish him. I must finish. Medium length. Green tea, followed by aromas of caramel and butter. Fatality. I Fatality. I think he just offended every Japanese person in, <laughs> in Japan. Hey! Well, make sure you send this to your friend, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the Japanese that? seem to uh, not like traditional Australian humour, I don't think, because New Year's last year... Uh, I wonder why. I think we were having a few too many and we decided to see who could pee higher on the fence and uh, she was very offended and ended up leaving the party and going home. So I uh, don't know if she'd appreciate that. Oh no. Who won? I, I won. <laughs> <laughs> it goes without saying, Tim won. <laughs> He's telling so, the story so, so obviously he won. So who was the poor guy on the other side of the fence? Or like, who's yard? Is that where she was standing? Is that why she yeah, was standing? Yeah, maybe. Mr. Miyagi. You must wax on, wax off. Oh, no, not again. Catch my urine with your chopstick. <laughs> <laughs> so getting back to whiskey. Oh, yes, that's right. That's what we're here. Okay. Um, that smoky, burnt flavour I can smell must be the toffee. Mm. Yes, it, it smells sweet, but very smoky. Candied winter spice. Mm. What does that smell like? It's, it's spice in winter. It smells sweet like a Jamison's, but not not as sweet. I mean, this is this is sugary, maybe a slight caramelized toffee smell, more with smoky with a smoky flavour. Smoky in the bandit. Tim, can you smell anything? Uh, I, I can smell the smokiness of it. I think it smells a lot nicer than uh, the non-aged one or. The, the whiskey that we just tasted a bit earlier. The Yamazaki? Yeah, that that's one. the one. So, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Shall we have a taste? We shall. Three, two, 
one, kill him. Lance, high five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spot on. There you go. Holy me, I You've almost got him on cue, Marto. <laughs> one day I will resist and then explode. <laughs> I feel like I can I can taste wood, but I don't know. Is it is it aged in barrel or? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel yeah. like I can taste wood. I don't know what kind of I can taste it though. Um, okay. Oh, it it felt like it was going to burn, but it didn't, and now it's just really warm. So mm, I'm getting a lot I feel warmth. that that warmth is would that be the spice or something? Maybe I don't know, but it's mm. like when they say winter winter spice, it feels like it's just keeping me nice and warm right now. Mm. It is very light, sort of a light, youthful sort of flavour to it. That's lovely. It's <laughs> got that lovely, warm smokiness to it. Mm, it's definitely, I can definitely it, taste it, the warm. It's not like an Isla whiskey where you get either a, a very peaty flavour or a very heavy blast of smoke. It's not like that. It has that smoky oh, yeah. edge to it, and that's delicious. That is very young. Now, can I throw something out there? After having enough time to... Feel the aftertaste come through. Is anyone getting green tea? Yeah, it's. I'm getting an earthy, earthy taste. Is, um, You're feeling one with nature right now. Oh, I'm definitely well, one with nature. Yeah, I can, I, hear, I can I, hear the birds. Yeah, I can hear the birds. I'm well, definitely one with nature. <laughs> mm. That's lovely. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think it's the the smell that gets you. That that smell is very nice. Then it's it's a lot of packed wood flavour. There's not so much fruitiness. It's all really, really fine barreled barrel flavour. And then it hangs around for a while. This is bringing back memories of being on a cattle farm. Yeah, that's it, true. It has that hay and grassy element to it, mm. which doesn't... It's not the star of it, but it is there. And it's also got the smoky edge. That, mm. That's a lot going on for 12 mm. years, single malt. Japanese know what they're doing. Yeah, well... Oh, yeah. Uh, this, this is a hard decision. Mm -hmm. like we have, on one end of the table, we have Yamazaki, very, very fruity. And the other end of the table, we have a, a dry, smoky, as you'd say, hay-flavoured farm from the farm area. Mm. Whiskey. And mm. these are two completely different flavoured whiskies. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Mm. It's funny you say that because um, you say they're on two different ends of the table and they are... What brand do we have here Mia. that we're tasting at the moment? The Mia, Mia Gikyo. Mia yeah, the Gikyo, Mia Gikyo yeah. is actually distilled by a, a brewery that they say is in rivalry with the Suntory mm. Brewery. So yeah. it's very interesting that they are on two different ends. That is delicious. It is. I am loving this. Is it on par with Ardbeg, which I gave an 8 out of 10? I don't think it is, no. Sorry, holding this one in my mouth too, the Mia Gikyo, I thought that uh, like just switching it around and trying to get a bit of a taste for it in my mouth, it um, had a, a lot of a, a lot more punch in my mouth than the um, the Yamazaki that we had earlier. Like it was, I, I just wanted to swallow it and get it down, and it was the the aftertaste. So it's it's there and a lot better, mm, a lot stronger. So you're saying yeah. it stays in yeah. your mouth a lot longer? Yeah. Well, even just holding it in my mouth, okay. I, I'm like it, it's a lot stronger in my mouth. And then when I swallow it, the aftertaste is there and the the warmth is there. Yeah, goes down a lot smoother. Definitely a winter's drink. Yeah, I got I got really nothing bad to say about this. This mm. is absolutely lovely. Mm. I love it for a screw top. It, yeah. Hey, okay, well and, there goes my theory out and, the window. And it's a screw top. A yeah. twelve year single malt Miyagiko from Japan is a screw top, and it is absolutely mm. delicious. The Yamazaki and the Miyagika are both single malts. That's They're right. They're both screw tops. That's right. The Nikka, which is a blend, has a cork. Mm, maybe they're doing something like that. They're, they're, they have, we, we put corks in our blends and screw tops on our single malt. Maybe. It's just a theory. I was not expect. I was expecting it to be close to the Yamazaki. I was expecting fruit and that sort of Caribbean flavour you get from all those sweet fruits, the dry fruits, and maybe a little bit of coconut. That you get from the hours. I was not expecting that burnt, lovely, smoky edge to it. Mm. I'm very happy. Tim's going to try it with a bit of ice. And... How is it with ice, Tim? No, I don't like it as much. I don't. <laughs> oh, really? It's gone backwards. So, yeah, yeah, like we, we've given you a really good whiskey, and it's better without the ice. 
the warmth isn't as isn't as strong in my mouth now. It feels. Mm-hmm. It just takes it's, a bit of an edge off. Still got a bit of a tingle there, but it's yeah, it's taken that warmth away. Hmm. Interesting. So, out of ten, what are you thinking? Um, I, I like this one a lot more than the other one, and I scored the other one on a seven. So I've got to go an eight for this one. Even numbers I like. I'd consider it again, possibly. It's a fair bit of a kick compared to the Yamazaki. So I'll probably have the Yamazaki a little bit more than what I have this one again, possibly. Yeah, the, the Yamazaki is a bit more light and youthful mm. than the, this the depth of the Miyagikyo. Mie and the, yeah, the Miyagikyo was um, a bit of burn and a lot of heat. Okay, so too warm for you on that one. Mm. And my problem is I want to score it high, but I gave the Ardberg an 8, but I love the Ardberg. I would put that around an 80. Oh, jeez. Uh, Thank you. Around an 88. 88? Yeah. That, that is quite nice. I am very happy with that one. My problem is, if I score it higher than an 80, I'm saying it's better than Ardbeg. But I love my Ardbeg. I love this too. Would you consider scoring the Ardbeg higher? But see, I'm worried about... Uh, no, 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 because I've had an Ardbog and I gave it a 9 out of 10. Ooh. I do love my Ardbeg. But this is absolutely brilliant. I will give it an 85 out of 100. Ooh. That, that, is, that is very high for Amato's, for, for Charlie Moss um, rating. Alrighty, well, let's have some water. Yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I don't really want While we're in between samples and we're cleansing our palates, I've got some idiot news for you all. Oh, idiot news. Dun, dun, dun. I told you last time about the incident on the stairs. The hour long meeting about walking down the stairs backwards. Yeah. Yeah, it is not sensible. Now, I didn't actually explain where I worked. I actually work in a hospital. Now, if if you heard the last idiot news and heard the absolute stupidity of the decisions made in regards to that idiot news, it would come to no surprise that the hospital I work in is run by the government. What a surprise. Now, we were called into another staff meeting, and again, this had nothing to do with myself or the department I work in, but we were told all about this incident. Now... There was a turn in a bed. A patient needed to be turned over so that sheets and whatnot could be changed. In this scenario, you have a nurse and you've got two wardsmen who turn the patient. The nurse takes care of the sheets and all the wiping and all that stuff. Apparently, in this particular bed turn, the nurse got very, very angry and agitated with the wardsmen because the wardsmen, to her standards, weren't doing their job properly. Dangerous combination. So she got very, very upset and angry with these two wardsmen. Ended up rushing through the procedure, ripping the sheets off the bed and doing things too fast while she was sort of giving them a serve at the same time. She ended up whipping a sheet off the bed very fast and irresponsibly. Some of the patient's body fluid on the sheet fl flicked up into one of the warders' faces. Oh, wow. Oh, that's not going to end well. And got them in the eye. Oh no. Oh. Now, <laughs> the reason why we're in the staff meeting, me not being a wardy or a nurse, we're being told about how we're supposed to act in such a scenario, even though we never do this. It's not the patient's fault for having fluid on the sheet. It's not the patient's fault they piss themselves. It's not the nurse's fault for being upset and angry and doing things the wrong way. Okay. No, no, no. Whose okay. fault is it? It's the wardsman's fault. Oh, oh, of course. Because they weren't wearing goggles. Oh, so... What? Was, <laughs> wow. So, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> weren't wearing goggles? <laughs> <laughs> weren't uh, wearing goggles? That's ridiculous. This is, hospital? This is worth another one-hour staff meeting. So, hang We on. need to be told about these wardies who were not wearing goggles. So normally you because because that's going to reassure the patients. <laughs> a wardsman walking around with goggles. Hello there. Just protection myself. Just in case you piss in my face. <laughs> so normally, normally, you go to the hospital hospital because you're not wearing goggles. Yes. <laughs> so now you got to go to the hospital and watch everyone else wear goggles. Yes. Okay. So. It's not the nurse's fault for being unprofessional and having anger management issues. No, no, no. There's courses for that. She, she's quite alright in, in her own little world where she wants to 
crack the shits at other staff members. No, no, it, it's the warder's fault because okay. they were wearing protective gear in case they had to work with a bitch of a nurse. Oh, jeez. So why wasn't she wearing eye protection? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is that, and what about the patient? The patient. Yeah, hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe the doctors need to start wearing goggles too, just in case. Yeah. yeah. Well, coming, coming from a pharmacist. I was going to say, and the pharmacist, would... they should start wearing yep. goggles. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I'm, yeah, I'm going to start taking safety goggles to work oh, now. Why not goggles? <laughs> what about a full hazmat suit? That's true. <laughs> why just stop at goggles? Why what? stop at goggles? What if it misses the eye and it hits the mouth? They better be wearing a duck bill mask as well. Yep. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, so you're going to have the full face um, face shield? If you're admitted to hospital, say, I can't be admitted until I've got my goggles for the wardies when they change in my bed. Mm. Actually, Jeez. maybe it's should hand out goggles as you're being entered through emergency yeah, that's or not bad. through the entrance. Mm. Like, oh, yes, your room is number 109. Don't forget your goggles. Yeah. <laughs> and just in case there's three people there, here's a pa- three pairs of goggles for the two wardies and the mm. nurse. Don't mind all the people down the corridor in the hazmat suit. Yes. When, when they come in an emergency, they're just going to have to start turning away patients because they didn't bring goggles for the wardies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can't be admitted. You don't have goggles. That's Big so sign true. out the front of emergency, BYO goggles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You will not be admitted without goggles. That's yes, be stupid. A five dollar entry fee for goggles. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like three D glass at the movies. Yeah, that's right. Buy your ticket, but if you don't have goggles, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's one dollar per it's head. Yeah. Crap. And then there'll be a big bin out the front saying, "Please put your disposable goggles here when you leave." As long as they don't have uh, fluids. Yeah, up on obviously. Them. Yeah. yeah. Well, even if they do, they just hose them off, mm. and then give them back to the wardies. And then I'll go to less staff meetings. Yeah, yeah. Less hour long we, staff we, meetings. We we have a resolution. Yeah. yeah. Resolution solution. That's right. Well, there are some idiots in the world. Mm. Idiot news. <laughs> Shall we have a whiskey? Yes. I, <laughs> I think, think I need one after, after, after that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's just stupid. <laughs> you got me a picture of like this guy sitting in the bed throwing poo with the woodies. No, no, no. Yeah, the the that, patient that, is absolutely yeah, oh, yeah, innocent. Yeah, they are. They're, they're in definitely innocent. If, even if they throw poo at the wardies but you know the wardies should be wearing glasses that's right next time I'm in hospital if I'm admitted I'm just gonna poo on my bed and throw it at the wardies and say you should have been wearing glasses <laughs> <laughs> don't do that I'll have to go to a staff meeting <laughs> <laughs> a two hour long staff meeting oh. <clears throat> so our third whiskey is the Nicker 12 year blend Tim you brought this back with you yes I did so um knowing that Lance is a fan of whiskey so i thought that i'd try and find something for him coming back from japan so i um did a bit of shopping and wanted something a bit more special than what i could just buy from the local supermarkets and i found a nice um shop that um was selling all different kinds of alcohols and i've found this nice bottle of whiskey it's called the nika premium blend whiskey 12 years aged um and it's a premium blended whiskey uh 43 so I hope you guys enjoy it, and um, it will definitely be good to have a taste. So it's very interesting. Mm. Like I said before, we've got two single malts that are screw tops, and we've got a blend that's a cork. Yeah. That's and, quite unusual. And, and might I add, it is such a fancy, large cork. Wow, that's a different smell. It is, isn't it? Wild metho. Oh. <laughs> wild metho. Wild metho. Wild, wild, mild metho. So not caged metho. No. It's almost like Free a range. fruity, caramelised smell. You can smell that it's a blend. Yeah, definitely. You, you're yeah. getting like caramelised, slightly caramelised. I'm enjoying that smell. That's a mm. nice odour. I'm not. Are you? No, I'm not enjoying the that punch you get from the, the blended. So, so you can you can tell the difference between a blend and a single malt by smell. How so? Like, what's, what's the difference that you can smell? Well, with my experience with blends, blends usually give off that alcoholic smell that just smells like alcohol and how you like to put it is metho whereas if you were to sniff a single malt you don't get that punch of alcohol you get flavors you get fruit or smoke or mm. so I'm, I'm herbs getting, or whatever i'm but, getting fruit and, and slightly caramelized smell out of that after you craig shall we have a sip actually no i've got to do the traditional japanese hi <coughs> 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 Man, spice tingling in my tongue. Spice? So you got a bit of heat. Any flavours you can pick up? I'm not good with flavours. No, I'm not picking up any flavours at the moment. Alright. Tim? That's a lot smoother than the other two. Oh! oh. 
the twelve year blend. That's just gone down like the Yamazaki. I I held back a cough, and the Miyagiki. I had a little bit of a woof. Oh. That's just gone straight down, and now there's a there's a warmth coming after. Okay. Nice warmth. Um, I can definitely taste wood again. Okay. Oh yum. Good. Yeah, that is good. Lance, you happy? Yes. Yeah, there's plenty of wood there. It's um, it is slightly oaky. It, it, I didn't think it had oak in it, but now now I'm. Well, that's the magic word, isn't it? Ever yeah. since we had the green or Irish whiskey, we have both fallen in love with the flavour of oak. We have. There, there, there is definitely a hint of oak there. Real flavour, ice cold. Um, God, that is smooth. That is so smooth. I don't think it's very smooth. Oh, I haven't even received a burn. It's warm. It's no burn. You've got a lot of tingling on the tongue. Yeah, I'm getting that. It's not all that smooth. It's not as smooth as the Miyagikyo. But I it, think it, it is. It's not, a, it's not all that sort of dry like you would expect from a blend. I think it's just as smooth. No. Can you taste the oak in it, Martin? I'm getting I'm not. I'm not getting oak. I'm getting a, a buttery sort of flavour. Hmm. It's not that I'm not enjoying it. Comparing it to the other two, I don't think it's quite up to scratch. But I, that may be a, a prejudice against blends. You do have a bit of a prejudice against blends. Uh, I, I'm, I quite enjoy it. Yeah, um, it's oh. nice, warmth, nice warmth about it. The bottle looks awesome. There's, there's a lot of flavour there. A lot of timbery flavour. There's a lot of, lot of timber going on there. There's, I can definitely taste oak. Um, I'm not sure what other barrels there is there, but there's definitely more than one. There's a lot of timber flavour there. Hmm. It's It smells fruity and, and caramelised, but I'm not getting a lot of fruity flavour through it. It's more overpowering by a timber taste, timber flavour. Very interesting. It is very warm, but warmth is something you expect from mm. a blend. I'm you you want to try yours with a little bit of water or a little bit of ice to see if it improves. Mm. Mm. So I've just put a little itty bitty bit of ice in what's left of my whiskey. Oh, that that flavour hangs around in the mouth for a long time. It's not as smooth as the other two. I think it's smoother than the first <laughs> one. It's, it's very, very on par with the second. No. I, I think it's, it's there's, there's more... Smoky, there's definitely more smoky flavour in the Mia Gatu. Ga Ga Yu. Mia Gatu. Gik Yu. Yeah, that one. This one, there's. I think that there's more more flavour in this one, as in not just being smoky, there's, there's a bit of caramelised, there's lots of timber in there, and it hangs around. The, the flavour hangs around for a lot longer. I think there's less burn than, than any of them in this one. But it's still warm. Yeah, it's, it's very, very slightly warm. Um, I wouldn't say it, it's anywhere near overpowering. It, it's just very... You could drink it summer or winter, I think. Well, I totally disagree. You disagree? <laughs> I, I think it's not very smooth. It is very, very warm. It's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just I don't think it's as good as the other two. And I'm sorry, Tim, I know you spent a lot of money <laughs> just to bring it back for Lance. I think it's alright. If, if I had a bottle at home, I would drink it, and I would drink it neat. I think it's less than a 7 out of 10. It, it's it's a blend, and it has that... You can taste that clash of, of oh, just... chemicals in there. It, I'm not getting any wood flavour out of it, like you said, so... I'm getting heaps. I'm not impressed. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> alright. I know... I, know uh, I hope he's going to cry later. I, <laughs> no, I, I'm fat. I enjoy it. Like, I, like I, as Lance said, I, yeah. I can taste mm. wood. I yeah. can taste warmth as well, like you said. I, I I think I feel a bit of warmth. It, I think it's the smoothest of the three to mm -hmm. me. The Mia Gikyo was smooth as well, but I just feel this one goes down and it doesn't really... I didn't want to even try and produce a cough or anything from it. It didn't dry me out at all. It's not It's not dry at all. Oh, that's cool. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's not less than five. It's not a bad whiskey. When you compare it to these other two we've had, there are flaws in it. Which means I'm going to score it less than seven. Mm-hmm. But gotta... before I score, Craig, <laughs> <laughs> would you or would you not have the Nicker 12-year blend again? Probably a flat maybe. 
Maybe. Uh, unsure, maybe. And unsure, maybe. And unsure, maybe. <laughs> How's that for okay, non don't, don't call me, I'll call you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> call me, maybe. Settle down, Tim. Call me, maybe. <laughs> Put the microphone down. <laughs> yes, please. Put the microphone down. Okay, here's a good question for you. Out, out of the three, which one would you have again? Oh, I'll probably have the Yamazaki again. Okay, there you go. The, the Nikka was a very interesting combination. As I said, there was a lot of tingles on the tongue and a warmth. No, yeah, probably the Yamazaki, the Nikka, and then the Miyagakyaku. So you rank the Miyagakyaku at the bottom? I, I definitely think, as Mato said, that... Um, sorry, the the Miyagakyaku, like, the, the smokiness that's there in that bottle is... Is strong, but I, I can definitely taste wood in this that I couldn't taste. That's a lot stronger than what I could taste in that. Um, I in think which which bottle? So the Miyagakyo, I could also taste wood, but I feel that the, what wood I can taste in this is stronger. It's the only taste I'm really getting from this. In, in this, you mean the uh, the nicker? The nicker. Okay. So in the nicker, I think that I, I'm tasting the wood. It's staying there. It's staying warm in my mouth. Um, I'm not tasting burn, and it's not dry at all. Yeah. I'd um I definitely drink. Be able to drink this just neat. I think I, I didn't want to put ice in mine this time around. I, I'd give this an 8 out of 10 as well. So I'd score it on par yeah. with the Miyagiko for having a different taste. But it, it to me, it's smoother. But I, I'd still score it on par because I think that the, the smoky taste that was from the Miyagiko is stronger, like a stronger direct hit than uh-huh. the taste that's in this one, yeah. the wood taste. So I'd score it on par as an 8 out of 10. Fair point. I've enjoyed all three. Yamazaki being you know, a lot of fruit, a lot of tang there. It's been really good. Then we've gone to the completely other end of the table. You know, a bit of smokiness there. It's been really good. The Nika, um, I, I quite enjoy it. The, there's a good punch of, uh, of smokiness. Lots of timber flavours going on. It does warm me up a little bit. It's, it's, it's nowhere near as, as um, warm in the mouth as the other two. Being, being a blend, it's, um, like I say, it's a lot harder to score being a blend. You just don't know what's... I like to know what's in there before I, or I score things, but, you know, if I knew, then my scores would probably go out the window. So, um, going on what I've tasted today, I, I've really enjoyed um, all three. The Nicker, I'd probably give it around a... No, I'll say 80. I'm not, not going to go any lower than 80. I think it's very, very, very tasty. An 80 out of 100. Yes, for yeah. a 12 year blend. Yes, that is very tasty. Same as the Yamazaki. That's higher than what you scored. Uh, I'd actually. Talus Gadak still. I'd, I'd even, yes, because it is also equally very flavoursome. I would definitely be happy with around an 80. So, Talus Gadak still versus the Nikka, you rank the Nikka high? No, they're in the same. <laughs> Sorry, in comparing these three, yeah, you've scored the Yamazaki as an eighty. Would you then consider scoring that lower? If you were I'd, to say, I'd probably after trying these, yeah, I probably would go lower, a little bit lower on the Yamazaki. Now that I know the Nick is, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> this is very hard. I don't, I don't like Who scoring. asked you to? <laughs> I don't. I don't like scoring really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to drink, yeah. not to think. Basically. <laughs> oh, once I drink, then I think. Um, I don't think unless I drink. Out, out of the, the three, <laughs> I would definitely drink the Nika and the... How do you say it, Tim? Mia Gikyo. Yeah, that one. Really? It's that hard still? Well, I'm not... Mia Gikyo. Yeah, Mia Gikyo. There we go. I've got it. What's on, what's on? Mia Gikyo. They're very yummy. No, very good. <laughs> Let me end it that there. Yummy. I have used every word in my arsenal. Yeah. I'll go back to yummy. yummy. I have used <laughs> palate. I have learned to say mere gikyo. <laughs> mm. And I have decided to call it yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yummy in my tummy. So, tomato. Donald, what you reckon? So what do you, mm. what do you, oh, what's yum. your scoring? Out of the three, I rank this at the lowest, but I don't think it's a bad whiskey. I think it's a good whiskey. But it's not smooth. I'm not getting the wood flavour that you guys have said is there. Uh, it's not as good as the Yamazaki, which I gave a 7. 
Oh, is, like this, to me, brings back the taste of chewing on pencils in primary yeah. school. Hey, yeah. That's, that's, that's what this that's tastes a good, like, chewing that's on a good, pencils in primary school. Maybe this whiskey is lead poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a good um, description. With my prejudice of blends, which we've established... You have a thing against blends. It's somewhere between a five and a half and a six, yeah. so out of a hundred, mm. I'll give it a 58. Oh. Mm. Martin has his thing against blends. So our scores for today, just doing a bit of a rundown. Um, Yamazaki, we had Mardo 70, Lance 80, Tim 7 out of 10. Mia Gikyo was Mardo 85, Lance 88, Tim 8 out of 10. Rock down far. And the Nika, ooh, the most polarizing. Mardo 58, <laughs> Lance 80, and Tim 80, 8 out of 10. Nice work, gentlemen. So thank you, gentlemen. I've enjoyed today. I've had some uh, Japanese whiskies I've been dying to try for a long time. Finally got to taste them and very impressed with the Mia Gikyo. <laughs> Mia Gikyo. I'm, <laughs> what, I'm, what sorry, Tim, tar- I'm sorry, Tim. You brought back the Nika for Lance as a present and I, I dissed it. I'm, I'm very <laughs> sorry. But that's what we're here for. We it's, don't agree on anything. It's strange because you. you're on one end of the table and I'm on the other end of the table. Tim's on, you know, he's sort of in between. And Craig wanted to take the Yamazaki again, so of yeah. all three, so... Hmm. Yeah, they, they just shows all ends of the table, are, yeah. That we, are di- we are individuals. That's right. I'm not. <laughs> I got pee in my... <laughs> Don't forget the goggles. <laughs> so thank you, Tim, for joining us. Thank you for uh, guest hosting. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, I did. Thanks for uh, the invite. I um, definitely enjoyed tasting some different Japanese whiskeys. It was interesting, so. Yeah, welcome to the madness of the Grog Snobs. <laughs> welcome. So it's goodbye from me, Charlie Mops. And it's goodbye from Mr. Craig. Oh, hi, Uncle And it's a goodbye from that. That's uh, good morning, Craig. That's good morning. <laughs> what's, what's goodbye? I didn't know. Sayonara. Oh, sayonara. <laughs> How'd you not know that one? <laughs> I forgot. It's been oh, a long time. Dear. Uh, and it's a goodbye from Lance. I would also like to not end this so soon. Really? I also have. Again? <laughs> Yes, Over again. Again? <laughs> Every time! <laughs> um, I have uh, brought some Japanese beer. And we're finishing a whiskey episode with beer. Yeah, why not? Fair enough. Why not? <laughs> Here we have Kirin beer. Would you 99.9% like sugar free. Oh. Yeah, I know. Don't look at me like that. But apparently, Asahi <laughs> was not on special. <laughs> For the record, Asahi is the most delicious beer in the world. It is. And the Asahi black beer is awesome also. They know what they're doing over in Japan with whiskey and beer. Hmm. Shall we taste the Kirin beer? I can't wait. Similar to a Pils, isn't it? It is. It's sort of like yeah, a Japanese it's Pils. Definitely... Nice. It's not full of flavour like you get from the Asahi. And it's... It's, it's, it's very, very, very slightly on the power side. Very slightly. Mm. So, do we know if is all Kirin beer ninety nine point nine percent sugar free, or is it just is this like a sugar free beer or low carb beer that we've got here? Or I, I'd say it'd be just like a low carb beer. So maybe that's where the uh, bit of the flavour is missing. Something maybe. Most likely, it doesn't have any of the um, saturated fats or um, preservatives, all the good stuff. I'm enjoying it. It's nice. It reminds me of um, you know European. Thin flavored lagers and pilsners. Yeah. Japanese have nailed that with the Kirin. Yes or no? Is Kirin Japanese for number one? Um, no. Oh. It is not. Number two? I don't know what Kirin stands for, but I know number one is Ichiban, so. Oh. I'm not sure what Kirin is meant to mean. Okay. Well, I'm enjoying the Kirin. Not the best Japanese beer, but certainly. Quite uh, tasty. Yeah, it's definitely behind number one. Um, number zero. If Asahi's on special, I definitely would buy Asahi. <laughs> um, but if Kieran's on special, I definitely would buy Kieran. I'd definitely buy Asahi over Kieran. But this is nice. It's goodbye from me, Charlie Mops. It's goodbye from Craig. Say no. It's goodbye from Tim. Catch us later. And it's goodbye from Lance. Cheers. Cheers, big ears. See you next time.